Uh, lesson number one, whenever doing a speech, do some market research with the audience. So show me some hands. Who of you is actually designing products? Only the design piece. That's a few. How many of you are actually manufacturing the goods? So in product, production. Well, very little. Who of you is in retail? So who is trading goods directly to consumers? A few more. And who is wholesaling? Who is buying and trading? Okay. And the rest is just here because it's cold? <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let me kick off with, uh, with a few thoughts. I mean, actually, when you see the, um, the schedule, then the title of the presentation um, was different. And I've been asked to just, you know, share a few insights and be a bit, you know, the reality check on uh, some of the things uh, that you will have heard today or will still hear. So it's a bit of a reality check. What's the context that we're all in? Um, so the first thing is, and you see a lot of debate about statistics in academia, you know, different people fighting for who owns the truth. Well, it's not so much about the detail, to be honest. I mean, the bottom line of this is pretty simple. First of all, uh, e-commerce is huge. How huge? Doesn't make big of a difference. It's huge. The second piece of information you should be aware of is the share of e-commerce of total retail is high single, low double digit, and will continue to grow. But within the foreseeable future, it will for sure not be, if ever, 100%. So yes, we do look at omni channels of sales distribution, and that will continue to be that way. And what you see on the uh, statistic uh, top uh, bottom left is that growth, however, comes from online. So bricks, um, brick stores, the physical retail uh, isn't growing um, at all. Um, so any growth model will need um, to look at digital as part of a strategy. When you look at the uh, online fashion landscape, then it's, um, and again, I mean, just Google around, tons of stats, tons of assumptions. But uh, if you look at the list of players uh, that people appreciate in the German market uh, when it comes to online fashion, you might see a few surprises, and you obviously see uh, a lot of uh, known players. That's the landscape you're in. So if you try to compete in online fashion, Definitely, that's a set of, of players uh, you should familiarize with because those are the players that your audience is gravitating towards. The landscape this all happens to, to, to be in um, has become a lot more complicated than it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago. I started in 1999 uh, doing e-commerce, and back then the funnel that we, that we saw earlier was, was you know, was pretty simple, was pretty straightforward. And you had to go to traditional online marketing channels to then basically um, invite traffic towards your transactional platform. So the point of sale was where the transaction happens, happened. And the online marketing funnel was where you generated the traffic. When you look at the landscape today, it's a lot more fragmented. And the different layers from, you know, getting attention to basically facilitating the transaction, those layers have been mixed around. So Google is competing with Pinterest uh, and Facebook and Amazon and eBay. So it's a lot of, um, let's say, uh, competition, new competition, already in the upper part of the funnel. And then ultimately, the transaction, the value of being able to process a transaction has c come down tremendously. Um, Ten years ago, it was complicated and difficult to basically process an order. Today, a lot of plug-and-play solutions are out there. So the transaction itself is not where your differentiating moment will be. Um, and finding your audience and, and you know, uh, capturing the traffic that you need to get to volume has become a lot more complicated. Um, that's worth noting. Um, when you talk to, to um, physical retailers, the first thing you'll hear is location, the A location. And that's pretty, pretty understandable because traffic, footfall, is what you need 
in order to then convert into a transaction, hence generate, hence generate sales. Uh, when you see on the left, it's difficult to read. This is Footfall Berlin, and the number one location in Berlin is the Townsienstraße. So that's the number one location in terms of footfall. And when you add it up, you get the equivalent of roughly 160,000 uniques per month. Now, you know, just try to rent the location in the Townsienstraße, do the maths, do the sales per square meter you would need, and I'm pretty sure that it will be a difficult uh, position to be in. When you look at online reach and you see Build.de's figures in the middle, it's a multiple. It's a multiple of the top location, uh, of, the, of the top physical location in Berlin. And just in terms of comparison, you have um, transactional sites like eBay. And this is just the traffic for eBay fashion. That's not total eBay.de, that's just the fashion vertical uh, on eBay. It's roughly 7 million uniques per month. When you look at um, uh, IVW figures for Q4, then eBay.de is right between, is above focus.de and, and slightly below uh, spiegel.de. So it's a high traffic um, platform that we're looking at. And the challenge for us all is the user has the same amount of hours per day than he or she used to have 15 years ago. The problem is the, the offering, the, the options to spend your time digitally all day, the options have risen substantially. So people spend time on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Instagram, on Facebook. That time eats into your opportunity um, to build a relationship and uh, create transactions. So the question is, how do you leverage the existing A locations online? What are those A locations online? And how can you participate? Because it is simply impossible, or at least it's very expensive, to build up your own online A location. The other thing that, that I think is worth um, uh, realizing, and I'm sure you guys are uh, well aware of this, um, the shift within the channels, the so-called channels. Um, customers today, and there are, I mean, to be honest, customers are way ahead of most retailers and most brands. Customers, we all, move seamlessly uh, across channels, as we like to call them traditionally, move seamlessly across channels all day. We touch physical, we touch digital, and it's seamless throughout a 24 hours um, 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 period. Now, companies tend to cut it into chunks, talk about offline and online. We at eBay and Brands for Friends, we don't talk about e-commerce at all. We talk about commerce, and we heard it earlier this morning. So commerce is the game, and you see the shift uh, away from offline um, towards online, and online is, of course, dominated by mobile. Mobile is um, the kingpin, is the glue that basically connects everything that we experience and will experience in the world of commerce. And when you talk about mobile, I think it's, it's also interesting for you guys to, to understand the scale of things. Um, and of course, it's, it's rapidly, it's the hockey stick we heard about, it's rapidly growing. Um, and across the board, Germany looks at a mobile share in commerce of roughly 30%. Uh, at eBay, we look at slightly more than 40% of gross merchandise value, so it's, a, it's, it's um, above the German average. And on Brands for Friends, uh, we look at an average of more than 60%. And that's mobile sales, that's not um, uh, traffic. And we even had, prior to Christmas, we even had peak days with more than 70% of Brands for Friends um, business sales running through mobile devices. Um, so conclusion number one is, I think, you, you know, be very clear, if you consider a growing business, um, be aware, growth is online. That's number one. Number two, uh, online fashion, uh, when you look at the, 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 the space that, that we're in, it's crowded and it's full of people that are highly skilled, specialized, and well-funded. 
the financial architecture of our, of your competitors um, is most likely different to your own one. So be aware of that uh, and choose your battles wisely. The value chain that your business will be operating upon is fragmented. So identify where you want to compete and how you want to do it. And then last but not least, consumers are a lot more omnichannel, are a lot more channel agnostic um, than most of the companies um, that we all know and most of the brands, uh, especially in fashion, uh, tend to be. Second chapter, um, four critical factors. So as I, as I started to point out, the first thing I think everybody considering to start a business or everybody being in business, the first thing is define your play field. Are you a manufacturer? Are you a designer? What's your sales distribution? Do you want to retail directly to consumer or do you want to wholesale? These are important questions because ultimately that will determine your financial architecture. And most importantly, you should be well aware where growth should come from. So once you've decided who you are and against whom you want to be competing, the second question is how can you actually grow? And I would just really recommend to remove the, the notion of romance that every now and then is in our industry. This is not a romantic exercise. It is business. So if you're in it to generate profit margins, you need to know what your contribution margin is. You need to know what your cash flow is. And you need to be able to identify where growth ultimately should come from at what cost. Um, and this is what I mean by, with doing the maths. If you consider it to grow, you will need to grow also, and especially online. So you need to participate in online. Now, if you want to do that, you can either buy the solution or you can make it. If you decide to make your own e-commerce business, then be aware of the cost that are associated with, with this, um, because 15 years into e-commerce, um, a lot of uh, players have established themselves quite nicely. So um, either you make it, which is highly cost intensive, capex, opex, or you try to partner. Um, and leveraging partnerships is something I can, I can just you know, strongly recommend um, to consider. Um, and of course, the question is um, who to partner with. And as you might uh, guess, I have two very strong suggestions to partner with. Um, and just, just a few stats to get a sense for what we're talking about. I mean, eBay, you know, 160 nearly million, 160 million um, uh, active buyers worldwide, 17 out of which alone in Germany. Active buyers means at least one purchase within the last rolling 12 months. So high level of activity. Um, for, for some of you, it might be new, but actually the um, amount or the share of of items that are new and fixed price on eBay is nearly 80%. So 80% of things that move on eBay are full price and there are new items. Um, and just a, a detail, because yesterday we were at the SEEK, uh, you know, and we had a bit of a session with, uh, with Tonchu TV, and a, a stat you might find interesting, uh, talking about sne sneakers lately a lot, um, 80 million is euros is the revenue that eBay Germany, uh, the fashion team, generates just, just with sneakers. On Brands of Friends, more than 7 million members, uh, 150 campaigns per month. Campaigns are sales events, flash sales events, you know. Um, 34 million items we've sold uh, within the eight years of our existence, and it's 4 to 5 million visits per month. What's more important uh, or more interesting for you guys, I suppose, is a bit, you know, a feeling for velocity. So what's the scale, what's the volume of trading that's going on on the two platforms? And you see that at Brands for Friends, it's up to 10,000 orders per day, that is. Um, and once we launch uh, a sales event, uh, obviously, um, you know, fans of the flash sales model know we launch campaigns at 7 in the morning and 7 in the evening. And if it's, you know, the, the hotter the, 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 the event is, um, the higher the peak. And we have up to uh, 10 orders per second that we need to uh, get through the system. Uh, 7,000 watches per day um, is uh, something that we are able to move very easily. Uh, on eBay, uh, it's of course a multitude of volume. 
uh, every 60 seconds we sell a handbag in Germany, every 21 a pair of heels, um, and every 12 seconds we sell a dress uh, on eBay fashion. So velocity is high. Um, Puma, a, you know, a brand that you might think you know, is already well known, uh, you know, Puma has decided, for example, to partner with us on eBay fashion um, and open a branded store on eBay because obviously even for a mainstream well-known brand it is interesting to tap into the uh, traffic that we have. So we've launched them in Q3, we supported them with all the, the modules that we offer, on-site marketing, um, uh, sales promotions, advertising on that high traffic uh, ebay.de website and we've done some impartial research afterwards uh, to see what it does or what it did. We managed to uh, generate an uplift of 9% on unaided brand awareness. For a brand that's already well established and well known, 9% uplift because we just created that extra level of attention on the high traffic website uh, of ebay.de. Um, and we even managed um, to, to showcase the impact towards the offline distribution. So for Puma, it meant that 7% more people than before um, were now considering to go offline and purchase Puma items in the offline Puma uh, sales distribution, which is very interesting. So conclusion number two is, first thing, be clear on who you are, what you want to achieve in your business. What's your business model? What's your contribution margin? How do you want to grow? And what are the economics around it? The second is, if you do want to grow, I mean, maybe you have a strategy you know, of not growing, but if you do want to grow and you do want to make money out of your business, if that's the case, then you need a sustainable digital strategy. And without any doubt, that needs to be gravitating around mobile. The, th the third point is, um, leverage the ecosystem. I mean, this is a great place to connect. Um, make use of these events, reach out to, to people that can help you, leverage partnerships. Um, but when you do that, and that's the last call out, um, and, and, and then I'm done. When you do that, consider your partners wisely. So be clear who is a competitor in disguise, be clear who is not. And I would strongly recommend to choose partners um, that are not competing with you directly or indirectly. Um, and if you want to discuss entrepreneurship, um, always remember um, Sir Richard, uh, there, it, it just doesn't happen. So you need to be very deliberate and conscious about what you want to achieve uh, and, 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 and go strong and be bold about it. And if you want to discuss that with Brands or Friends um, or eBay Fashion, here is the, um, the email, reach out. It's wachstum at ebay.te. Thank you very much.